This video looks at the sensitivity of GPC. So far, we've presented a formulation for the implementation of a GPC control law. We showed how you could express it as a transfer function, but we gave very little consideration as to whether or not this is actually effective. We simply said, yes, you can predict, yes, you can put it in a performance index, here's your control law. But is this a good control law? Does it give good performance? Is it even stabilizing? Is it robust to parameter uncertainty, noise or disturbances? The previous video has indicated that we can at least observe from simulations the impact of noise and disturbance. But again, we didn't make a lot of comment as to whether this was good or bad or how you might change it. Loop sensitivity then. In general, it's useful to be able to analyze the sensitive sensitivity of a loop. And in the case of GPC, it may also be useful to understand the causes of poor sensitivity. If you understand the causes, then you can do something about it. Now, reviewers may recall that the Karima model, which we've used or focused on mostly with GPC, assumes slowly time varying disturbances within the model. That was the way we represented disturbances with this integrated white noise. And therefore, you'd expect GPC to be quite effective at dealing with slowly time varying disturbances because that's in built into the model. However, what would you do if you had fast varying disturbances or measurement noise, because you might argue that the model hasn't really taken account of those explicitly. Let's look at some sensitivity functions then. This was the GPC control law, and we'll stick it in here again, just so you can see. So we had a DK delta inverse in there. We had your system G here. We had an NK here. And the feedforward PR doesn't actually affect loop sensitivity. But the key thing is, because I can write down a simple block diagram, it should be straightforward now to analyze the impact to different types of uncertainty. What sort of uncertainty might I be interested in? Well, you might want to know what's the sensitivity to modeling errors or parameter errors. What's the sensitivity to disturbances? What's the sensitivity to noise? Now, in each case, we can form a transference from the particular uncertainty we've chosen to the input or output um, or pole positions or something of that nature. Now, what we're going to do here, you'll notice I've put it at the bottom, we are going to only do the CISO case. And you might say, well, that doesn't make sense because predictive control is largely used for the multivariable case. But the reason for that is the algebra for the CISO case is straightforward. So we can illustrate the concepts and the points quite quickly and easily. If you want to do the algebra for the multivariable case, it gets a lot messier without actually adding to the key concepts. Parameter uncertainty then. We're going to consider just multiplicative uncertainty. You can do additive uncertainty yourself because what we're doing here is demonstrating some principles. So if I assumed I had multiplicative uncertainty, then my closed loop pole polynomial would end up being something like this, 1 plus gk times 1 plus delta. And you're going to set that equal to 0 to find the closed loop poles. Now, standard analysis shows that you can rewrite this using an expression something like that. And therefore, the sensitivity is basically this term here. And you'll see I've summarized that there. So the sensitivity to multiplicative uncertainty can be written as gk over 1 plus gk. Now, if we substitute in our control law, which is here, it's nk over dk delta, our system will assume it's b over a, then what you'll find is the sensitivity to multiplicative uncertainty is given by something like this. So you can actually compute it if you want to, sketch the boat diagram, etc, etc. We're going to focus more on things like disturbances, however. What's the transference from a disturbance to the input or output? Now what I'm going to do, it's a little bit messy, I'm going to put a summing junction in here just before the output and assume that I've got a disturbance coming in to the system there. So that's an output disturbance model. Now if I do that and I say what's the transference from this disturbance through to the output or alternatively the disturbance through to the input, then you'll see I can derive 
using straightforward loop algebra two expressions. The sensitivity of the output to the disturbance is A dK delta over PC and the sensitivity of the input to the disturbance is essentially A and K over PC. So that's straightforward algebra. What happens if you wanted to look at noise on the output? Now actually you're going to get the same transference because the noise in essence is coming in in the same place. Okay. There is some subtleties here. Disturbances come in other forms. They're not just output disturbances. So you could form the relationships for disturbances coming in elsewhere. But as you will see, it doesn't really add to the concepts that we're showing here. And therefore, we're not going to do it. Some reflections then. So the sensitivity functions are easy to define and therefore easy to plot. But what we're interested in is, are or is the sensitivity good or bad. Now if you do some MATLAB simulations what you're going to see is you're going to see some make some worrying observations. Specifically what you'll see is a typical GPC control law seems to be highly sensitive to noise. Now you could obviously sketch the sensitivity function and you would see that but this is the observation you'll get just from doing simulations. Now if you're highly sensitive to noise you're going to get overactive input signals and in general that's unacceptable because you'll cause a lot of fatigue. And here's an example of the case. So you'll see I've introduced a little bit of measurement noise on the output there and there you can see it, see the impact on the output. Um, but what's the key issue? The impact on the inputs is very large indeed. So you've got a relatively small amount of measurement noise, but it's caused the input to be very aggressive, and this is going to cause an enormous amount of fatigue. It's basically unacceptable. You can't have your input bashing up and down like that just because of some measurement noise. So in summary, given GPC can be represented using conventional linear transfer functions and block diagrams, you can compute the sensitivity analytically for the constraint-free case. And you'll notice we've just introduced a few sensitivity functions. You can, of course, do many others as fits your needs. Now, even though practically one of the main reasons for using predictive control is because you're also doing constraint handling, and you'll say, so far, we're just doing the constraint-free case. The key thing is it gives insightful indications about the underlying robustness and sensitivity. So in the case of noise re rejection, what the simulations indicate is that GPC is very sensitive to noise, and especially the transference and the noise to the input signal, which could be very worrying because fatigue is a significant issue on many real processes. A look at the parameters in the sensitivity function gives some indication of why this is the case. So the sensitivity of the um, input to the noise, you see, has got this function here. You see A N K over P C. Um, particularly, you'll note that the parameters of N K are linked to the parameters of Q. If you look at the definition of N K, you'll see basically it's something multiplied by Q. And Q is known to have some parameters which are large. That's the key thing. And because they're large, then the transference from the noise through to the input is also large. Now, predictions are linked to just a few past outputs. So if changes due to noise can cause sizable impacts on the predictions, then these in turn will give sizable impacts on the input. And that's what you'll notice. This Q has some quite large terms, and therefore changes in the output will map through that Q into the control law and give you large values of the input.